Hey, good morning. I'm Johnny Scoville, and this is Chase the Heat. It is a beautiful day here. Filming at Scoville Bird Sanctuary in beautiful Tucson, Arizona. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Before we get the video started, I'm having a cup of Roasty Buds coffee this morning. Carolina Reaper coffee, actually. Uh, today I'm doing a review from one of my favorite sauce makers, for real, High Desert Sauce Company, Zach and Dana Perkins. Just great people, make great sauces. And this is a, uh, who doesn't love sriracha, you know? Um, sriracha's become a, such a thing, it's, uh, I don't know, you know, it's, it's, to me it's more of a condiment than a sauce. But High Desert Sauce Company is going to change that up because this is their Ghost Racha. Sorry for the shadow. Ghost Racha. So here we go. It's the Red Label Reserve, people. Uh, it's sweet, salty, and garlicky. And hot. And hot is capitalized. All three letters. H-O-T. Hot. This simplistic sauce features a foundation of red bell pepper. And who doesn't love red bell pepper? I do. Uh, we add lots of garlic, agave nectar, and way more ghost peppers than they needed. Way too many, it says so. A little more salt than they normally used also. Try to make sure we get your forehead sweaty, your esophagus burning, and your tummy rumbling. That's their goal. Slight trepidation may be present at this stage. Not to worry. This is just the start of a painful pleasure. We, wanna, we want you to question the unfortunate possibilities moving forward. Tread a little lighter. Enjoy. I love that. Shake well and enjoy, people. They reckon three out of five stars or skulls. They even use flames. They use skulls. Oh. You see the skull and crossbone there? Sorry for the shadows. There you go. Skull and crossbones. Hey, sorry about that. All right, so here are the ingredients, people. Uh, pepper mash, which is water, red bell pepper, ghost pepper, and chilipin pepper. Distilled vinegar, garlic, agave, ne agave nectar, and kosher salt, and that'll be it. Oh, man. I got a lot going on. I suppose, you know, I'd rather have a lot going on than, oh, you know what? I hate when this happens. Give me just a second. I do have a lot going on. I, I, it's really a strange time in my life because I have so much going on that I actually need to, I tend to be a list guy for some things, but now I have so many big things like projects, like projects going that I got, I have a list for. Uh, beautiful color on this sauce. There's the uh, consistency of it. Now, the hallmark of a good sriracha sauce is that sweet, salty. Kind of got the sweet thing going, too. Wow. Whew. Smells, are, uh, the, the aroma is just incredible. It's just, it's seductive. Whew. Wow. All right, so here's the poor people. I'm sorry for the shadow, but... Here it is what it is. There's the pour. Look at that. Gorgeous goodness pouring out. Oh, look at that. Oh, my goodness. He saved it, people. There we go. From High Desert Sauce Company. It's a ghost racha. No spillage. You see that? Huge spoonful. No spillage. I'm Johnny Scovo. And this is Chase the Heat. Here's the thing. Um, boy, this changes the sriracha game. Anytime I have a sauce that has a, a I, and I do this mostly with any sauce, if it has several peppers or a specific pepper, I look 
to see if I can taste that pepper. Heat's great, and you want it to be hot, but I want to know if I can taste the ghost pepper. You can taste the ghost pepper in this. Those ghost peppers have very, very unique flavor. So it has a beautiful flavor. The sweet and the salt that you expect from a sriracha, this has some heat to it, though. Okay, I will tell you this. If you're a sriracha, here's what happens. Well, I'm talking to you now because this has happened to you, all right? You, you, you're a fan of sriracha like I am. And what happens is you start using sriracha. And there's no other way to kind of describe it. It's not the most pleasant analogy, but like somebody who's using a, a substance, you know, somebody uh, starts using a substance and that substance doesn't, they're, they're, they're developing a tolerance to it. So what happens is they need to use more of the substance. Well, chilies are the same way. You build a tolerance to it. And all of a sudden, you know, one day you're like, oh, you get this great sweat. You feel great. And then one day you eat the sriracha and you're like, I don't get that sweat anymore. And then you might find yourself going, but I, I kind of like that feeling and I, and I don't get it anymore. If you've outgrown sriracha, because so many of you have, I'm talking to you, it's okay. Don't feel bad. Don't, don't, it's nothing to be ashamed of. You don't feel like, oh, I got a problem. You don't have a problem. You know what your problem is? You need a hotter sriracha. That's all. There it is. Ghost sriracha. So if you're a ghost pepper fan, you're going to love this sauce. It's, it's just sriracha with ghost. It's got the sweet and salt thing going on. Absolutely lovely. The heat on this for a non-chili head would be problematic. You wouldn't enjoy it at all. You wouldn't. If you're a chili head, this is going to be, man, this is a hot sriracha. You know, ghost is a hot pepper. Um, this is going to be a six and up. Yeah. Yeah, a six and up. Absolutely lovely. Zach, you're a beast. Well, it's time I get your, I think I'm leaving soon to do some work. I'll be gone for a little bit, but uh, I want to get in the kitchen again. That was so much fun. All right. People, let's talk about jobs. We've been talking about gigs you can do where you can make some interesting money. Okay, we got, how many more do I have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, whoops, three, six, nine. So we have nine left. I'm not going to do them all now. I'll do half of them now. Okay, so we're going to uh, strange jobs. Now, this one was interesting. I've heard people pronounce this different ways. Um, I believe I'm going to pronounce this job the right way because I was told this by a person who did this for a living. Samaye. A Samaye. Um, okay, Samaye are wine experts uh, who work in fine dining establishments, uh, helping patrons select wines that enhance their dining experiences. Now, this prestigious role requires a deep knowledge of wine, including its production, varieties, and pairing with food. Uh, certified sommeliers can com uh, command high salaries, especially in luxury restaurants and hotels. The job involves tasting, selecting, and purchasing wines, as well as educating staff and guests. Sommeliers often travel um, to wine-producing regions to expand their expertise. The career combines passion for wine with hospitality, offering a sophisticated and rewarding profession. Now, Tommy and I grew up uh, on the East Coast, and we grew up in a town where there was a five-star resort that was owned by Rockefeller. And it happened to be, listen, it was the first job of every kid in the town. I don't care. I mean, because there were waiter positions, a waitress. You could be a front staff. You could be a front desk. It could be a, a bellhop, a busboy, a doorman. There were just a million jobs at the country club, the golf tennis, you name it. There was just a million jobs. So every kid I knew it was their first job. There was a, uh, they, and it was a very, very high dollar uh, place to stay. It was just a very highfalutin. And there was a person there, his name was Oliver. And I don't know if he's around anymore. I went to school with his son. Uh, Oliver was a Samaye. Now, if you've never seen a Samaye, what a Samaye will have around their neck is a little silver dish, and they would pour the wine out, and he'd smell it. But uh, he was a fascinating dude, and I often wondered, like, how did he score that job? Because I was there, it was my first gig. Not really. Well, I had side gigs, like small jobs, but the first job where I had to sign, like, a piece of paper, like a, 
from taxes taken out was that was there and i and i wondered how he got that gig i wonder if he's still there i wonder how much he got paid but he was a samaya it was his gig he just walked around he they'd say you know they'd talk to him say this is what we're planning on ordering for our food what wine do you think would accompany this best and he would sit there and discuss and it was fascinating interesting i could be like a pepper samaya you know what i mean you're going to a restaurant <laughs> I can tell you what peppers are going to enhance your meals. All right, number uh, 12 is it, uh, the next one, is an art restorer. Now, this, you're going to have to have mad skill for this. This isn't something you say, hey, yeah, I want to be an art restorer. Uh, art restorers preserve and restore valuable artworks and jo uh, a job that combines artistry and science. Their work is critical in maintaining cultural heritage and revolves a detailed understanding of art history and restoring techniques. Uh, restorers work in museums, galleries, and private collections and commanding high fees for their specialized services. The job uh, demands patience, precision, and I want some more coffee before I finish this sentence. Yes. Um, and a deep respect for art. Um, I'm sorry, restorers work the job demands patience, precision, and a deep respect for art. Advance uh, education and art uh, con conservation and hands-on experience are essential. Art restorers not only earn well, uh, but they also contribute for, to preserving art for future generations. Uh, you know, it's an interesting thing. Art, you know, you've you been to a museum, like you, you think about the Louvre, you see the, like the Mona Lisa. I don't know, but I've been told. Uh, that, if you go to these museums, the art you see is not the actual, it's a, it's a copy a lot of times because they don't. Have you seen this recently? The, the like climate protesters or people protesting something or another will go to a museum and throw ink or stuff on paintings to try to destroy them, to make a statement. First of all, I think that more than likely those are not the real pieces of art. Number two, those people should be beaten within an inch of their lives for trying to destroy art for the sake of making a statement. I think it's foolish. At any rate, um, art restores. Pretty interesting, huh? Now, are they really restoring the true pieces of art or are those art hidden away somewhere to protect them? I don't know. Probably could do a deep job dive on that. Medical test subject. A subject very interesting one. Uh, medical test subjects or clinical trial participants contribute to medical research are com compensated for their uh, participation. They play a crucial role in the development of new medicines and treatments. Compensation varies based on trial lengths and risks involved. Participants earn, can earn thousands of dollars, especially in trials that undergo extended stays or involve higher risks. Uh, the job inquires willingness to undergo medical uh, procedures and commitment to advancing medical science. It offers a unique way to uh, earn money while contributing to potentially life-saving research. I was at, I put my name on a list to, to have an experimental uh, back surgery where they artificial disc replacement. It was a European uh, surgery, and they didn't excuse me, but I did throw my name on that list. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. That's a weird one. Right? Isn't that sort of a weird one? I don't know, man. Maybe it's not. This is going to be the... Let me read two more, and then we're going to stop. Uh, when I was in college, I, I had a uh, psych class, and uh, I volunteered for a few different things where you could earn bonus credits. And one was a, a sleep deprivation study where me, a guy named Dan, and Mike went into a room to see how long we could stay awake. It's all voluntary, you know what I mean? And you couldn't, you could have all the coffee you wanted, drinks you could have, you know, movies. There were VCRs back then. Magazines, we watched TV. We were locked in a room. And we see how long we could stay awake. We, we almost killed each other. Everything was fine. And then we started fighting. I remember that, uh, there were people in there separating us. Like, we, we got into a fight. I don't really remember why. Uh, next is a personal shopper. This is going to be the last one for today. A personal shopper. I bet. Would you like to do that? Shopping to me, I'd rather jump off a bridge than shop. Like when I shop, when I go somewhere, I know what I need to get for the most part. I know where it is. I almost know what aisle it is. I pretty much know what it's going to cost. I know what store it's going to be at. I, I, my job is to get in and out, execute this thing as fast as possibly, like with, like, like it's an exercise. Like I'm, I, seriously, I go out and I, I can't stand like shopping. 
like walking around, looking at stuff, waiting for something to jump out at you. Wow, I can't fathom a, a, a more terrible way to spend time, but some people are into that. All right, listen to this. This could be you if you like this. Personal shoppers provide a bespoke shopping experience, often for wealthy or busy clients. They earn money by selecting and purchasing items on behalf of their clients. From clothing to groceries, experienced shoppers can build a lucrative career. Uh, especially if they have a network of high-end clients. The job acquires a keen sense of style, market knowledge, and strong interpersonal skills. Personal shoppers often enjoy perks like travel and uh, access to exclusive pro um, products. It's a career that blends retail knowledge with luxury of personalized service. Interesting. You know what's really funny? I can't ever see getting to the point where I would use that. I have a personal shopper. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Um, interesting job, though, right? All right, we're going to wrap it up now. Um, got some more interesting jobs to tell you next time. Uh, we, right, right here, right behind the camera, is a big gazebo we're building. Oh, yeah. Can't know how much fun we had yesterday. You know, and the, if you saw, just wood everywhere. And, but it's going to make a great fit, place for filming. Listen. Tell somebody you love them today. Be kind to somebody, please. Life's too short. In the description box, you're going to see a link for Zach Perkins at High Desert Sauce Company. HDSC. It's a great company. Please check them out. Great sauces. If you like sriracha, you're going to love ghost racha. You will love it. Please try it. And you'll see the link in the description box. Right there is my son, Johnny Scoville Jr. Right there is my brother, Tommy Scoville. Right there. All of the challenges I've done. Some silly, ridiculous stuff. If you haven't checked them all out, they're right there. Right there. That's uh, pepperology for all you new chili heads. I love you guys. Great day ahead. I'm Johnny Scoville and this. Ha! This was Chase the Heat.